Hello everyone, welcome back to machine learning. My name is Neeraj Kumar. In the last video, we discussed about basics of probability, including product and some rule of probability. If you haven't watched that video, the link is available in the description. Today, we will discuss about probability density functions, their descriptive statistics, including expectation variance and covariance. We'll also discuss about the Gaussian distribution and maximum likelihood estimation of the parameters of the Gaussian distribution. The reference for uh, this video is Christopher Bishop's Pattern Recognition and Machine Learning book. So let's discuss the probability density function. So if for a random vari real valued variable x, the probability of uh, variable, that variable taking on values uh, within the interval a and b is given as the integral over that interval, then that particular function is known as the probability density function for, uh, over the random variable x. So this has uh, uh, the normal probabilities of uh, normal properties of the probability that probabilities should be essentially positive or zero, and the integral over the entire sample space should be equal to one. So two most important results of probability theory are sum rule and product rule. So for the sum, uh, the sum rule uh, states that if you have a joint probability density over random variables x and y, then the marginal, that is the a marginal can be computed by integrating over a, random, uh, over a particular random variable. So let's say you want to obtain probability of x from the joint probability density uh, p x y, then you just need to integrate over the y. So what this does is, so uh, by integration you remove all the variation that was there in p of x y due to y. So the only uh, only variable that is left is x. And then you have product rule of probability, which states that if you have two independent random variables x and y then the joint probability density of x and y is given as the product of the individual probability densities that is probability of x and y can be written as p of x multiplied by p of y. These two uh, rules play a uh, wider role in uh, deriving Bayes theorem and uh, which is a very important uh, result in uh, entire Bayesian inference and uh, uh, related stuff. So uh, it's important to keep these in mind. Let's discuss about uh, the expectation or weighted average of the uh, sample points. So expectation uh, for discrete uh, random variables can be written as the product of uh, the, uh, the values that random variable take and the, uh, and the probability with which those values are taken. And then uh, uh, for, uh, after obtaining this product for each of the uh, points in, in, in the sample space, you sum over all the uh, points in the sample space. So for discrete random variables, this P of X is usually known as the probability mass function. The same formula extends to the continuous uh, case where uh, the summation is replaced by the integration, but the basic formula remains the same that you take product of the values that random variable takes and the probability with which those values are sampled. You take the product of these two quantities and you integrate over the entire sample space. Let's take an example that suppose you have n points taken from a uniform distribution. So what is uniform distribution? Uniform distribution is a distribution where uh, the probability of each point in the sample space is equal. So a common example of this is uh, uh, rolling a dice. So you have uh, six possible outcomes, but all of them are equally probable. So uh, in that case, you have uh, probability of xn, so nth uh, value equals to 1 by n. So for in, in rolling die case, n is equals to 6, so you have probability of let's say x1, x2, and so on equals to 1 by 6 for all values in the sample space, right? So if you plug in this uh, pxn equals to 1 by n here, you, you uh, get this formula, which simply uh, means that the expected value is actually the average value of the um, distribution. So in, in case of uniform distribution, this is the actual uh, value. In case of let's say Gaussian distribution, this is the weighted average because all the probabilities are not the same, and, and so on. So that's that's uh, that's a measure of centrality of the uh, distribution. Then you have uh, the measure of variance or spread of the distribution, which simply states that how far each point is from the mean of the distribution or the expected value of the distribution. So so you have uh, variance of x, which can be written as difference between point x minus it. Uh, the expected value of x, square this difference and take the expected value of all those uh, differences. So what this means is, 
So you have a uh, point x1, you compute the distance between x1 and the mean value. Then you go to point x2 in the distribution, you again compute the dis uh, distance. So to make the distance non-negative or positive, you square each of these distances and compute the expected value of those distances to arrive at, uh, uh, to arrive at the quantification of the how far, e, uh, how far the points are from the mean value in a given distribution on average. So that's, that's what we can see. So if you solve this uh, square uh, inside the expectation, so you'll, you can easily derive this formula that variance of x can be written as expected value of the square of the uh, variable minus the square of the expected uh, mean value of the random uh, random. All right. So what is uh, conditional expectation? So conditional expectation is simply uh, the expectation of x given y can be written as product of x into probability density function of x given y. So for conditional expectation, you simply plug in the conditional probability density function and then sum over the entire sample space. Next is a very important quantity, which is known as covariance. So covariance for two random variables x and y can be written as the expectation value, expectation over the product of difference of x from its mean and y from its mean. So you have uh, points x uh, in its probability density function. You compute the distance of all the points. Similarly, you compute the distance of all the points in y. You take the point wise product and then you uh, take the expectation over all the uh, points in x and y. So that's covariance. It just simply states, uh, states that how the random variables vary together. So if they vary, uh, if they are highly related to each other, so if a change in x also drives a change in y, then you you will expect a high covariance. If you uh, if x and y are completely independent or they don't change together, so you will expect a low to zero covariance in, in that case. So if you solve this uh, product uh, within the expectation. So you can easily uh, derive this uh, this equation, which states that covariance between x and y can be written as expectation of uh, x y joint density of x y uh, minus the individual x uh, product of individual expectations. So that's straightforward. Now well, let's discuss about uh, a very important probability distribution known as Gaussian distribution. So the formula for Gaussian distribution is uh, is written uh, is written here. And it obeys the standard rules of probability, which says that probability should be positive and the integration of the entire sample space should be equal to one. So the important quantities uh, that define Gaussian distribution uh, are its mean and variance. So this simply states that a Gaussian distribution over a random variable x for a given mean and variance can be written as this using this formula. I don't want to speak the entire formula, but you can understand that. This is the formula. This simply tells us how far the each point is from from its mean, and you also uh, take an exponent of that, and you uh, compute the Gaussian distribution. Now we will dis. Uh, so uh, you can also imagine that mean of the Gaussian distribution is almost at its center. So its center uh, is the center of the distribution, and the variance tells us how far the points are from the center on an average. And the square root of the variance is known as the standard deviation of the distribution. Okay, so now let's discuss about maximum likelihood estimation of the unknown parameter of the distribution, Gaussian distribution. So you have an underlying distribution which is shown in red curve here, but you do not have access to this. What you have access to is these green bars or the data points. So you have n data points, x1, x2 to xn, and you assume that these data points are taken from a Gaussian distribution. But you don't know the mean and variance of that Gaussian distribution. And maximum likelihood estimation is the procedure that you use to estimate the mean and variance of the Gaussian distribution from the available data. Okay, so how this works? So you first define a likelihood function. What is a likelihood function? Likelihood function is a function that states that what is the probability of observing this set of data given certain parameters. So you have mu and sigma. You will you can see you do not know mu and sigma, you have only access to the data points. So, so that's why it's known as likelihood function. So you change, you you can randomly uh, choose values of mu and sigma and see if that Gaussian fits to your data or not and so on. So uh, 
you want to get maximal value of that so you want to select those values of mu and sigma that maximum maximizes the likelihood of observing that particular data set right so this is given as the product of the density over individual data point so why it is written as the product of uh, why this likelihood function is written in this form so for that we need to know about identically independent random data points identically distributed independent data points so what does this mean is what you want to say is the points x1 x2 xn they do not depend on each other they have they are independent of each other and each of them is taken from a gaussian unknown gaussian distribution so if they are independent from each other then their probability by the product rule of probability can be written as the product of the individual uh, probabilities of the individual point so the probability of the individual points come from an unknown gaussian so you take product over product of gaussians over n points to create this likelihood function now we need to measure mu and sigma we do not know that we only have a data points x and we have a formula with unknown mu and sigma so the simple way to uh, obtain uh, to obtain the values of mu and sigma is to take the derivative with respect to each of these variables and then equal it to zero you will get get the values right so this is the simple uh, procedure that is used to estimate the values of unknown parameters of gaussian distribution let's see how it is done so you have this likelihood function first you take log of uh, the likelihood function why do you take log of the likelihood function because the log function converts the products into summation so you have log of uh, uh, products of uh, products of uh, density over each random variable uh, you convert that into summation so why that is necessary so that is important because probabilities are usually uh, values less than 1 so if you multiply smaller values that results in even smaller values let's say you have a value a uh, probability value of 0.1 you multiply it with 0.1 uh, so you get a value of 0.01 so product so you have large sample space you have a large number of points so their products will be uh, their product will uh, lead to a very small value if you do not take the load and that small value leads to underflow errors that's why you need probability the second reason uh, that's why you need the logarithm transformation second reason is that once you take the log in the gaussian case there is an exponential involved so if the log function is there that exponential will be removed and you will get a simple algebraic equation like this which you can solve by taking the gradient over unknown variables and equating that to zero so the reason for taking log is to avoid over uh, underflow errors and uh, to convert the exponents into normal uh, functions and in the case of gaussian distribution okay so now you have log likelihood function you take derivative with respect to mu and then you are uh, once you take the derivative of this function with respect to mu you arrive at this equation you can solve it on pen and paper and once you equate this right hand side equals to zero then you can simply see that maximum likelihood estimation is simply the average of the uh, average over the number of observed variables right so this is simply the maximum likelihood estimation of the mean now we do not know the variance we also have to compute the variance of this uh, unknown gaussian distribution again you take the log likelihood function you take derivative with respect to sigma you compute this you equate this right hand side equal to 0 and you compute the maximum likelihood estimation of the variance right so so far so good so we have computed mean and variance of the un, uh, unknown underlying gaussian distribution from the available set of points okay let's discuss one of the limitations of this maximum likelihood estimation so you have two distributions here the green one is the original distribution and red one is the maximum likelihood estimate from the blue data points okay as you can see in a b and c the data points are uh, are shifted right so that means your estimate of the mean and variance which is dependent on these blue observed data points is actually shifted in each case so you have mean here a uh, maximum likelihood estimate of the mean should lie here in this case it should be here and in this case this should be here and similarly the variances might be different um, when you compute uh, maximum likelihood estimate of variance from different data points but an interesting property is that for maximum likelihood estimate of mean in each case if you take 
the expectation over the maximum likelihood estimates then it converges to the true mean of the underlying green gaussian distribution what this means is that so you have mu1 as a mu1 maximum likelihood estimate here mu2 here mu3 here so uh, when you take expectation over these three mu's you will arrive at the original mu and this is proved here so i i have solved the equation uh, i have solved this for you so you can see the expected value of the maximum likelihood estimate with even with different data points converges to true mean the problem lies in the variance so as you have seen these two data points they lead to this uh, this uh, maximum likelihood estimate the red red curve you can see the variance of this um, probability density function is no way closer to the original underlying green uh, probability density function the reason uh, is, is simply that the data points are uh, closer to each other so it doesn't uh, basically estimate the true variance similarly uh, the case is here uh, similarly you can see it here so what uh, maximum likelihood estimation does is it underestimates the variance of the uh, underlying gaussian distribution so how you can prove this it can be simply proved by taking the expected value of the maximum likelihood estimates of the variance in each of these three cases i have derived it here for you you can see that expected value uh, instead of being equal to sigma squares it, it is equal to n minus 1 over n into sigma square obviously this quantity is less than 1 and whenever a, a real number is multiplied by a number uh, less than 1 it, it, its value actually decreases so you see here the variance is the variance in each case the variance estimate maximum likelihood estimate in each case is not equal to the variance of the green curve which is the original distribution so this leads to bias uh, so what uh, what what is bias here so if you have used this in, in some sort of generative modeling this distribution this estimated distribution will always sample the points in this region it will because the probability of sampling the points uh, away from this region is almost zero but actual distribution has uh, is cent centers around here and there is a fair amount of high chances of sampling points here. so that's why it's a biased distribution right so in nutshell maximum likelihood estimate accurately estimates the mean of the Gaussian distribution but it underestimates the variance and this leads to bias in the learning all right so we discussed about uh, probability density functions we discussed about mean variance covariance and Gaussian distribution we also discussed about maximum likelihood estimation of the parameters of the unknown Gaussian distribution from observed data and in, in the next video we will discuss about probabilistic perspective of curve fitting problem and we will see how we can use uh, Bayes, Bayes theorem to estimate the parameters of the uh, polynomial curve fitting problem. And Rochika will also discuss uh, an implementation of maximum likelihood estimation for Gaussian distribution in Python. So stay tuned to the channel, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so that whenever we upload a video, uh, you receive a notification and don't forget to like the video. Thank you so much.